it is a remarkable story. I mean, it's an astonishing story. I can't think of any story really. It's a bizarre. It's, 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 it's a bizarre. It's a bizarre story. <laughs> it is. Let's just yes, accept yes. that. It uh, it's a wonderful is. and amazing story, but it's also really weird uh, and unique, obviously, which is why all the attempts to analogize it just kind of just don't quite work in some key respect or other. But from their point of view, as you, I oh, think, in this book, absolutely. have the emotional absolutely. empathy to see, this is, what? What is happening? And, 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 and they just lived in the same villages or neighborhoods or towns or, 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 or whatever for, for many, many generations. It lived a pretty, Jews were a small minority in that region. It wasn't hugely populated, obviously, in the early 20th century, as you, as you also point out, but it wasn't unpopulated. And the people living there had, had real links to the ground, to their homes, in a way that nobody coming from outside could possibly have. And so essentially, when you look at the paradox of this, then, of course, I don't want to get into all the details, but of course, the partition plans and so on never, well, however, I think admirable many of them were, however well-intentioned many of them were, never got the consent of the people living there. And it seems to me that I don't blame them. I don't know how anybody could not blame them. I mean, what? You're coming into our country and reestablishing a whole, and not only that, but it's going to be a religion different than ours, and not only that, but so, and then of course, when there wasn't consent, the state of Israel was created by violence, by terrorism, by, by, by military action. It was not founded upon a mutual agreement. And that, of course, is the beginning of the of, of the fight. How do you how would you respond to that narrative of what actually happened? Well, I, I agree with you in that. I don't think that the Palestinians and for that matter, the the whole Arab world could have responded on any differently than they did. The 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 Palestinians could not have seen a distinction between between Jews returning home and European colonialists invading. From their point of view, the, the there was no distinction. From our point of view, we were not we were not coming to the land, we were coming back. And and the way that that we understood this process was re-indigenizing ourselves. That and and that we had always been we had always maintained the kind of vicarious indigenousness and so from our point of view there was nothing more inevitable nothing more natural than than this move and so the tragedy in this conflict for me andrew the tragedy of this conflict is that neither side had a choice and you know you can sit in judgment on on one side or the other and certainly that's where the 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 polemics fall fall. Well, this side should have realized that the Jews are the Palestinians should not have tried to to violently stop the Jews from coming home as as they did almost from the beginning, or or the Jews should not have presumed to ownership of a land that they hadn't been a majority in for two thousand years. And to my mind, those are irrelevant arguments. Because if you, if you look at the inner life of a people, you realize that these decisions were not made voluntarily. They weren't even made, they certainly weren't made uh, out of a place of ill will. Each people was responding in the only way that its history could allow them to. And, and so I'm not, look, you know, I, I'm not going to judge the Palestinians for trying to stop the Jews from coming home. I understand that. And in their place, I would have done the same. But my argument when I speak to Palestinians is, in my place, you would have done the same as well. Because that was the logic of our, of our history, of our tradition, of our faith. And the circumstances that we were in, the threats that Jews faced, may have been the impetus but that wasn't the initial motive. The motive was, was this sense of profound homeness. And so when you ask me, why did I leave the United States, which is really a fantastic home, and move to not such a hospitable 
region on the planet, you know, and uh, the Middle East is, is a pretty hard place and it's, pro- and it's getting harder. And, and, but for me, there was, there was no question. It was, and if you're asking for rational reasons, I don't know that I can give that to you. I just knew mm-hmm. that I was home when I, when, from the moment I saw, I saw Israel. 